Hi everyone, uh, this is just a really quick video here to say that um, I realized after filming uh, my video for the part three of my world building that it turned into a super long video. So this is just a little preface to say that um, I've split it into two parts. So uh, part one, um, which I published not too long ago, um, is still there and available. Well, it's okay. I'm gonna call it three point, three point, oh gosh. It's three and 3.5, we'll do that. Um, so point, uh, part three, uh, is live, you can go watch that. I'll put a link in the description, obviously, and uh, get some playlists going there for you. Um, but then this is 3.5, and I just really wanted to apologize um, for just how long the video was. <laughs> I just didn't even realize. I just totally was in my element, apparently. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoy, and I hope you like the more bite sized things. If you'd like just a super long video, let me know in the comments. So even though you might have, and I, I personally have pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of notes all about my world, um, I've been slowly dropping them in over time in my novel rather than an overload because yeah, your, your reader is, is pretty clever. If you tell them that um, as far as people go, um, there's, you know, that mostly in this area, they're pretty affluent. They can start to understand that other areas are probably not so affluent. You don't have to kind of just say that so blatantly and so, so um, you know, tell them all about it. You can show it by actually holding some information back sometimes. Um, and that's a pretty powerful storytelling tool, which I, I quite like to do a different video on. They've done a little bit of talking about it and um, things in various videos, and I will talk a lot about it during my world building characters, my storyboarding, um, the show not tell. It's difficult sometimes, you have to tell them some stuff, otherwise they're not gonna know anything. <laughs> and you can't always show every single thing in your novel, but there are things that you can do, and world building and characters is one of those things and devices to where you can use it to show things. So for example, and this is a really big thing, the elements of your world and the description of your world, you need to think about not only do you want to paint the picture for the reader, you know, you want them to feel as if they're pulled in and they're invested in this world you've made, you also want to use it a little bit as a tool um, to show them themes, to show them uh, various like kind of conflicts, to show them all of this stuff that is going to feed into why your novel is a novel, you know, what the point of the novel is. Um, and you can do that with the elements of your world. So you can do that with showing them what the government's like, you can do that with showing them the types of people in a city, village, town. You can do that by um, kind of going over how currency works, you can have it with a character paying with just enough coinage. And you can do it in all of these ways, and it's very impactful. It paints a really vivid picture for the for the reader, not author, <laughs> for the reader, uh, without just information dumping on them about, wow, okay, so this street here is really beautiful. It's got all this wonderful polished flagstone everywhere. And you go into another street and it's like little tiny ramshackle. You get the gist. You don't always have to do that. You do sometimes to, again, build the picture up. It's like, I guess, okay, it's like building a house. We've gone from allegory to allegory, <laughs> an analogy to analogy. It's kind of like building a house when you're writing a novel. You're laying all your bricks down. And so especially with world building, you just want to do a brick at a time. You just want to show them bits and pieces to give them a wider view of what it is you're actually showing them. And you do want to kind of be a bit sneaky and use it as a tool to show also these big themes, these conflicts and these crazy things going on in the world too. And that's something that doesn't actually get talked a lot about in the, because I've done a lot of um, writing workshops. I obviously did my master's in creative writing. Um, when we talked about building setting, um, it was, we never really talked about how important it was to view these descriptions and these uh, kind of real world touches to use them as tools too. Not only just for credibility and the reader feeling, um, you know, as if they're part of it when they're reading and they don't just feel like a, you know, secondhand observer. Um, it, it is so powerful for getting them along uh, with the ride of seeing these uh, recurring themes that you're, put, you're putting down for them. So in my novel, <laughs> I was, I'm going to talk about it forever, um, I have the capital city. The top of the capital, it's on a big hill, the top of the capital is really rich, really affluent, it's all the nobles and the royalty in the city. Lower down, the lower down you go, basically the poorer you are. So obviously I'm using the hill as a tool here and using it as a, you know, an actual physical representation of the classes of people in this city. And it came to me when I was planning and I was like thinking about the city and I was pulling some inspiration from things I love and just thinking like, well, like, I kind of want it to be like this and I have this type of architecture in my brain. So let me just 
draw some stuff, and I'm terrible at drawing, by the way. Let me just draw some sketches and then like kind of get some reference images for me. And then I had the hill inspiration, um, and I can't remember what it was from, but I had it just suddenly hit me and I thought, wow, this is a great way for me to actually physically show um, the, the dividing um, portions in this novel of the classes and the people in this city. Um, and again, like there's, I did a lot of this stuff where I said, oh yeah, anyone who wants to be anyone goes to the capital no matter how poor they then become, you know? So then I kind of, by not really going into the fact that outside of the capital is just a bunch, is like poor, essentially farmers and bumpkins, by not saying that specifically and just saying that the people who are, you know, the next big thing, or I can't remember exactly how I put it, um, kind of that really implies that anyone else is just not it, you know, they are to be ignored, they are, you know, a real afterthought to everybody uh, in the capital. So there, there's a lot of ways you can do a lot more with your world building. That's not to say that every single decision you make <laughs> about your world has to serve a bigger purpose, that is not the case at all. I'm just more thinking and saying to you all that it's a good way to um, totally immerse your reader in terms of the full package when they're reading this book, they're going along with the journey of the main character or characters, they're getting involved in the plot, they're feeling immersed in this world, is a combination of your descriptions and your kind of various imageries that you're portraying of normal everyday life for these people and the more you can show themes not only through the plot and through the characters which i'll also go into in another video um, you're showing it through the actual environment in which they are in at this moment you know when they're reading your book and they've left everything else in the world behind and they're completely just invested um, in your story and that is where the you know, the stories that you can think of when I say, think of your favorite, you know, worlds that you've ever read about. That's what these authors have done in the past. They've been able to describe these beautiful, just seamless, magical worlds, and they've been able to weave all of their themes and their conflicts and strives of the characters of the world into descriptions that they are giving. And that is the true power of a cohesive, and very um, immersive world that you'll be able to build if you kind of add all of these little things I'm talking about. Um, and yeah, that's exciting. I've actually gone over all of my points for today, which is really cool. Normally I forget something and I kick myself after I've edited my video and I'm like, why didn't I say that? So. With that, everybody, it's been fantastic having you along for this continued series. And for those of you out there who watched this and uh, were kind of wondering where all the other parts were, I am so sorry. <laughs> it's been a time. I've had a lot of different inspirations for obviously continuing my own novel and then doing other YouTube videos. But I could, I promise I'll try and get this, um, not this kind of novel, how to create a novel series, um, an episode every couple of weeks for you all just to keep things going and let me know in the comments if you followed along if uh, some of these tips actually resonated with you if you've written anything down um, because of this series that I've been doing here on YouTube um, and again if you like this kind of content you should totally subscribe to me and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload new stuff uh, I talk about all things writing um, I'm primarily talking about like novels and how to construct novels because I'm currently deep in the throes of writing my own. So I thought while I'm doing this, I might as well pass on some of the stuff I've learned because never writing a novel before and then jumping into writing a novel has been a learning curve and a half. <laughs> Let me just say that right now. Um, so I really wanted to share this with you and so that's how this series was born. So subscribe to me, I promise you won't regret it. And uh, like the video too, I love knowing what your guys' thoughts are on the stuff that I put out and any feedback, please just let me know. You know, I'm always open to email. I have my, my uh, business email, which is gonna be somewhere in the description or on my channel that you can totally send me an email, uh, leave me a comment, um, anything like that. I'm just always open to because I wanna create a really fun uh, environment for you guys to find this stuff and kind of really get some writing and creative stuff going. Um, and feel free to send me anything that you create by using my tips, that would be so cool. <laughs> but anyway, um, and again, if you enjoy me, if you enjoy the sound of my novel, you can always uh, become a patron of mine on Patreon and you get a whole host of different benefits. You get to see my daily writings, um, a bunch of my kind of uh, snippets of how I edit my YouTube videos, 
how I plan my YouTube videos, what stuff I do have planned for my YouTube videos going forward. It's all very exciting stuff, I promise. Um, and also just like you even get to see some early drafts of my novel and the completed chapters, which is really cool. So you should totally become a patron. It only starts at $1, which is just like nothing. And it just helps me so much. It motivates me. It is a support network. It builds this community that I really want to start, you know, I want it to flourish and I want us to become really good friends and, you know, all this really mushy, exciting stuff. Um, and a huge shout out to my two $10 patrons, which is Ellie Brown and Karen Hartley. And uh, again, if you pledge in this case more than $10, you always get a shout out in all of my videos because that's how much I appreciate you for giving me $10 a month. That's just really cool. Um, and so yeah, I am looking forward to seeing you all next time. I'm not sure which video will hit your feeds next, but if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, you'll be able to see it in plenty of time. And I hope you have a great one. Thank you.